Tonight on Stateline, a history of neglect in Victoria's juvenile correction centres. I've been in the same situation on this spot 10 years ago, uh, reporting similar breakdowns in the system. And how old is too old to look after children? It hurts me that there are children that do not have families. Now, yes, we are older. I don't say that that's ideal, but there are still children there that don't have families. Hello, welcome to Stateline. I'm Josephine Cafania. It's called Melbourne Heritage Action and it's supported by the National Trust. It's attracting a new generation of concerned citizens. The group's president is a 25-year-old archaeologist with a passion for Melbourne's old buildings. I'm Melbourne born, grew up in Carlton and an archaeologist by profession. Having travelled all over the world, um, lived in many other cities, I, I always really come back to Melbourne for its, its really unique charm and its, its character. Um, and the, the wonderful feeling that you get of um, past times and places, past events. Twenty-five-year-old Rupert Mann was so incensed at the treatment of Melbourne's architectural past that he decided to set up an action group aimed at pressuring the powers that be into protecting the city's heritage buildings. This is the front of the Marquilles Hotel. Is this building stay? Who knows? It's unprotected. This could be demolished at any time. There is absolutely no protection for this building. There's not even a heritage overlay for this area. This cluster of early 1900s buildings on the corner of Spencer and Flinders Streets is on a list of around 100 structures in the CBD identified by the Melbourne Heritage Action Group as having no protection. It's a cornerstone of Melbourne CBD because this is the very edge of the city. Do you think anyone notices it? Yeah, all the time, every day. People sit at these lights and come through here and they think what a beautiful building and they think that it's safe and they think it'll be there forever and don't realise it could be demolished at any time. The action group was born of a campaign to save Lonsdale House, recently demolished as part of the redevelopment of Maya. Concerned that other prominent buildings around Melbourne could face the same fate, Rupert Mann and friends and acquaintances set up a website, a Facebook page and a new lobby group to make some noise about the issue. If they demolish Lonsdale House because it's just a facade, well then in 20 years time they could do the same thing with the Windsor because it's just a facade. Each month they meet at a Melbourne pub to discuss their campaign. We certainly want to see a review of the way Heritage Victoria works. We'd like to see the City of Melbourne call for interim protection orders on threatened buildings uh, in the CBD while they're completing their heritage study. And we'd certainly like to see that heritage study result in um, the listing of new buildings. The City of Melbourne hasn't listed a new building off its own bat since 1982. Melbourne City Council was unable to provide a spokesperson for this story, but Heritage Victoria says it's constantly adding to its heritage list. I have to um, balance the need for heritage conservation alongside um, the need for ongoing viable economic use for places. What I consider is that for a place to be um, appreciated and repaired for future generations, it needs to have a sustainable ongoing use. And sometimes to achieve that use, changes are needed. Particularly among young people, there's a realisation that Melbourne's character is about its, its heritage and its, its old charm and how that exists together with the new. For young people, it's, it's about having a say in what we want for our home in the future. And that's the end of State Line for this week. For comments or to make a suggestion, you can go to our website. The address is abc.net.au slash stateline.